Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing really good. So today I'm working on a Galaxy S10e that froze up while making a strange noise. It says, my Galaxy S10e suddenly froze while making a strange noise and shut off. It tried to boot up twice right after when I pressed the power button, but it only made it to the logo before shutting off. And now it is not responding at all. I would like to have my phone back up in working order if possible, but most important request is to recover the data. This phone, it is drawing, looks like about 100 milliamps. So it's just steady, 140 milliamps, no ups, no downs, just basically flatlining at 140 milliamps a current on the charger. Now, a lot of people have asked me about this meter, where to get one, and I'm really sorry. This is something I got from Union Repair, and it's not a product that they have you know they've discontinued it and they don't have this in stock anymore and it looks like they don't have any suitable replacements but if you look around online for a usb current meter that'll also produce a graph i'm sure you can still find one and so that tells me a little bit actually so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to check and see make sure we got our volume up turned turned up nice and loud on a computer i'm going to connect this thing to a computer and then see if I get a connect. Not getting any connect tone. What I'm checking for is to make sure this thing's not like in EDL mode. When these things have failed flash memory, they have a way of going into, they'll be powered on, but they're not able to read the flash memory, so they're only detected as the computer as a Qualcomm modem, basically. It's just a standard serial device. So this thing's drawing 140 milliamps from the charging port and is not turning on. So then, to get this phone opened up, I'm just gonna start smacking around on it with some hot air. I got my hot air set on 220 degrees C with an airflow of 120. And I'm just gonna heat this thing up nice and warm. I'm assuming this thing, it's most likely already been into another repair shop. So once that's the case, they're usually quite a bit easier to open. All right, so I've got it warmed up pretty good. I'm gonna take my blade and just kind of get it under the edge of here. Oh yeah, it's definitely been open before. Samsung phones do not come apart that easy. Most undoubtedly a phone that has already been open once. It almost seems like the adhesive is still covering a couple of these upper screws. Like, it never got fully disassembled, right? I'm suspecting that maybe this thing has went to a repair shop because they took the back off of it, but they never completely fully unscrewed everything maybe. And if that's the case, I suspect it's because of how commonly rampant this problem is that a repair shop seen maybe a flashing Samsung logo and said, nope. Let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna go ahead, let's hook this thing up to the DC power supply if I can find a good spot. If I can't find a good spot, I'm gonna hook it up anyways. So now I've got the power supply on the screen. We're gonna to wanna to look at the right hand side here. And I don't see a good spot to clamp all at my ground. So I'm just gonna kinda of hold that in place. So I'm just gonna hold my ground on there and turn the power supply on. I'm gonna take my other probey probe here and just touch it right here on the positive side and see what we get. We get 20 milliamps zero, that's what we should get. Now I'm gonna press the button to boot. One, two, three, boot. 160. And we are frozen at 160, it goes no farther, which is sort of what I'm expecting to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the board the rest of the way out of this, and I'm gonna try a couple of tricks. So with Samsung phones in this situation, there's a very good chance that this thing is gonna wind up needing the CPU and the RAM rebald in order to be able to get the data off of it. But before going to those extremes, if there's any way that I can get the data off of it without doing that, that's a much, much safer route to go. And if that fails, then that still leaves me one more option of doing the CPU and the RAM and possibly the flash memory. So I'm gonna try some workarounds first and see what we get. 
All right, so that has all the screws out of the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect us a couple of wires here. So now, this board should shimmy right on up out of here with some goop on the bottom. There we go. There the board is. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop these cameras off of it because I don't wanna accidentally damage them. Cameras removed. And there's our bare board. So to start with, I'm gonna get me a little bit of a jumper wire hooked on here. Right here next to the battery connector is where I'm gonna be hooking up our wire for the power supply. So I'm gonna add just a smidgen of flux right there. I like to get it on this model right between that big shunt resistor or a fuse, whatever it is. It's sort of white like a fuse, but it's got a wire going to each side of it for measuring voltage drop across it. So we'll just hold that right there, put a blob of solder in there. If I can get it stuck to both of them, it'll help this to be more strong. How did I stick it to neither of them? Okay, let's just wedge that down in there like that. There we go. So that's gonna be where I hook my power supply up on the positive side. And then I am gonna go ahead and test this with it out of the phone just to make sure nothing has changed. So for the ground, I'm gonna be hooking it up right there just across those two shields like that. And then of course our positive lead, it's gonna clamp right here onto that wire I just soldered on. Now that leaves our power button connector right out here. And I'm not entirely sure which of those pins is gonna be the power on pins. So I'm just gonna kind of clamp around on it at random until I get the right ones. So power supplies on the screen, power set to four volts, and I'm gonna prompt this thing to boot. I think it's actually possibly the first two. Nope, so maybe it's the second two. Yep. So there we go, we've hung up at 160 milliamps yet again. Um, now, because I suspect that this is a CPU level fault, I'm gonna peel the sticker off the back of it and expose the CPU. All right, my hot air is set on 220, airflow 120. And I'm gonna warm this as I slide a blade under. Okay, now on this model, under this piece of metal shield here, we have the flash memory, but right here is where the CPU is. And I suspect, and my hope, is that this is failing due to a CPU disconnect. And here's how we're gonna test for it. So I'm gonna start with my power supply right here, hooked up to that bottom shield, and also right here to the wire I soldered on. Now, as it is now, I've got my hot air set on 220 degrees C with an airflow of 120, that's a little much. I'm gonna go with 220 degrees C, airflow of 65. I know it's hot enough to melt solder, but when you consider the thermal mass of this board and how fast it dissipates heat, it's actually not hot enough to melt solder. So then, I'm gonna prompt this thing to turn on. So here we go. Okay, we're now at 160 milliamps and nothing's happening. We're just sitting here at 160 milliamps. Everything's calm, right? All right, now while watching that power supply, I'm gonna take my hot air. Be, being very careful not to disconnect over anything. You can see we're disconnected from the computer. You can't see the current. That will destroy me. So there you go. <laughs> We're drawing 170 milliamps. It's sitting here flatlined and dead. 
And I'm going to take my hot air now and I'm going to begin to warm up that CPU. And just very carefully watch this as it warms up. 180, 190, 200, 300, and stop. As soon as we went to being erratic, I have a boot sequence. Okay. So by hitting the CPU with hot air, I have been able to finesse this thing back into starting. And this doesn't always work. And what happens a lot of times is I can finesse it into starting but I can't get it to survive a full backup to transfer all the data off of it. With the risks involved in doing the full CPU reball, I'm definitely going to be trying to get this thing to survive transferring the data. So it's booting. Um, we're now drawing 80, 800 milliamps, 600 milliamps. It's probably getting really, really, really hot. Yeah, it's hot enough. To, oh man, it's hot enough to burn me through the gloves. So. To be really straight and honest with all of you, I don't know if this is caused by a CPU disconnect. I don't know if this is caused by bad RAM. I really don't know exactly what's causing this. It's also possible that it's the flash memory next door, but since it wouldn't start up into download mode, I mean EDL mode, I don't think this is the flash memory. I believe this is a CPU or RAM fault. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and interrupt this right now and disconnect it and just for good measure I'm gonna take my hot air and sit here and bake this thing for a little while this is a big nozzle 220 degrees C airflow of 65 yet you really need some of the you know some of these to work out without doing the full job because if you have to reball every one of these and deal with the full-blown drawn-out process of CPU and RAM rework then it's it would be quite a bit to bear. I guess what I'm trying to say is you need an easy one every now and then in order to be able to survive doing this sort of thing. Just slip this right back in the housing. Power button hooked up. I'm not going to be hooking the battery up at the moment. So for my ground, I'm actually just going to hook that up right here to this antenna connector. That'll provide a good enough ground. And then again, the anode is going to get hooked up right there. And I'm just going to take and try to keep this from shorting on anything. I don't want it to lay flat on the bench. I'm just going to prop that up right like that. All right, turn the DC power supply on. Zero amps, four volts. And I'm going to push the button to boot. One, two, three. Boot. Zzzt. Samsung logo. There we go. Let's, 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 hey, let's let this thing start up. Now, from this point on, I'm actually going to be on pins and needles trying to get the data off of this thing. There are so many things that can go wrong at this point. Um, okay, you can see I'm up to a lock screen, which I'm thankful that this customer has provided me with an unlock pattern. Uh, this is the point in the video where I'm going to stop what I'm doing. Um, I'll bump back in and update you along the way here, but I have to try to get a backup off of this right now. 25 of 100 gig free. It's got 75 gigabytes on it. Woo! Come on, baby. Don't reboot on me. Stay up and running. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's being powered off of the USB cable entirely. I don't have the battery hooked up. It's only on DC power supply. Uh, the DC supply is set to four volts, but it's providing zero amps. So the DC power supply, it's actually not providing anything dun 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 Please don't reboot on me. You'll stay on and you'll get the backup. Please. I'm showing 16 minutes remaining. All right, we have two minutes remaining. And I can breathe a little bit easier, but chances are this customer wants way more than just that camera roll. Okay, the screen went to sleep, but the data is still transferring. The moment the screen went to sleep, I got a notification. <laughs> it made me think it was a USB disconnect, which is just like, Arr! Now, as bad as I want to light this screen back up, 
I'm going to wait until the file copy finishes at least. Okay, that file copy's finished. Now I'm going to proceed to grab the rest of the file system. I've got the DCIM folder. Now I'm going to copy everything else. There we go. Copying. Yeah, once I have the file system, then I'm going to move on to smart switch backups. So if you're watching this video and you are considering doing this to your Samsung phone to get the data off of it, I'm begging you, please have a good handle on the hot air temperature. Because if the hot air is a little bit too hot doing this process and you try to come along and just bake the CPU, there is a very good chance that you will make the next text life a total nightmare to try to help you get your data off of your phone. Um, I probably made this look way too easy with the way that I did that just now. I'm begging you, if you're going to try this, don't. Don't try it. Is that going to copy with no errors? 10 seconds remaining. Come on, baby. Five seconds. The Android directory just copied without any errors. What in the heck? It's going to be a good day. All right, so let's see. Okay, I'm moving on to smart switch now. All right, back up everything. 49 gigabytes, estimated two hours and 50 minutes remaining. Uh, yeah, back up everything. Next. That's two hours and 53 minutes with me being on pins and needles. It probably won't take that long. And for the duration of this, this backup, I'm going to have it leave the screen on. And uh, I sure hope it gets it. Ah. All right, this thing made it up to, I don't know, probably about 20%. I wasn't looking right at it when it happened. I just heard it go zzzt and looked over here and I had a Samsung logo. And you can see now we are back to drawing 160 milliamps. So my temporary workaround now has failed. Dang it. All right, I'm still reasonably confident and I'm going to do something a little different here. Uh, power this thing off. I just got done making popcorn. I was going to sit and eat popcorn while this thing did this. So let's disconnect it from the DC power supply. I'm actually going to bake it one more time. But my next attempt to copy here is not going to be on the DC power supply. I'm going to pump this battery up a little bit and use that. So let's go ahead and give this thing a little bakerini. So as it is now, I have a full copy of all the user files, which is a whole lot better than nothing if all else fails. I'm really just trying to be as safe as I can here. Um, I could go directly after a CPU reball, uh, but that could go south. That could kill it, and then I would have nothing. So I'm going to try really hard to get a backup of, of this thing without having to do a full-blown crazy board swap or even a CPU and RAM reball. So warm this up nice and hot. This model requires the back cover to be on it in order to not give a temperature warning. In order for this thing to be able to charge the battery, we got to have these contacts here touching on this back cover. It has some sort of a temperature sensor in it. So I'll slap that down in there and I'm only going to put these three screws back in it and I don't know if this has something to do with my success rate but I've had reasonable success putting it back together just this far with these three screws tight. Okay now with those three screws tight this thing will be able to charge the battery. Now let's see what we get for charging current. Here we go channel 2 I should get a vibrate when it's connected. 200, 500, zzzt. okay. We have normal battery charging. The power supply is still at five volts. Come on, baby. All right, we just kicked up to a full one amp of charging current. So you can see there we went from drawing a half an amp or so up to one amp and it's staying stable. So five volts, one amp. Now, I'm about to let this battery charge until we get, oh, I don't know, 9 or 
on the screen here before I try to boot it again. And while that is charging, I'm gonna be preparing an SD card for data transfer over the SD card slot, uh, because that's the way I'm gonna do the smart switch backup next. Oh, there we go. So now we switched and we're showing percentage, 1%, 2%, and also the charger has now kicked up to nine volts and we're drawing 1.6 amps. So we're getting a very decent rate of charge now. I'm just gonna leave this charge and I'll come back to it in a moment. All right, we are up to 9% battery power and the charger is drawing a steady 1.6 amps at nine voltaroos. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start this process right here and now because I would like the battery to be charging, you know, charging while this happens because I want it to hold the temperature of the board up. Um, another way I have done this is left it on the DC power supply and sat there with my hot air finessing it and trying to keep it warm, you know, just warm enough but not too hot while the files transfer, but that is a really delicate song and dance. So, all right. Now, the whole entire phone is warm because we're sitting here, you know, we're drawing almost 20 watts of power. All right, pushing the button to boot. Zzzt, Samsung logo. I'm gonna let this thing start up. I need my pattern. Pattern has been entered. Phone is starting, please don't reboot. Sometimes they're just too far gone and you can't get them to go through this process at all. Oof, man, it's, it's hanging for a long time. Okay, I got icons. Ah, ah. All right, pop in the SD card and uh, back up now without Wi-Fi. Go, keep screen on. All right, so here we go again. I've got this running. I'm gonna sit it down here and try not to breathe on it. Um, I would also like to keep my bench from sucking heat out of it. So I'm going to prop it back up. You know, my bench top, it's pretty cold. And I want this phone to stay pretty hot, but not too hot. All right, I'm going to let this thing sit and run. And fingers crossed, we'll get a full smart switch back up without having to reball the CPU. So it's actually a little bit better going to the SD card. Um, it's now estimating one hour and two minutes remaining and the battery is up to 14%. Hopefully we get a backup. Oh, we're getting so close. Come on, baby. We're up to 96% with only two minutes remaining. Originally it was estimating an hour to transfer all that, but it's actually taken you know a little bit less than 40 minutes. It's at this point in time where I start really sweating bullets because if it, it fails now, it's just like, Arr! I'm reasonably confident this backup will finish and then I will have at the very least a full internal to SD card smart switch backup. And then I will have also a backup of all of the user files. Um, now, even after I have, and notice I'm starting to talk quieter because I'm, I don't want this phone to vibrate. <laughs> So even after I have the full backup here, user file system here, I'm still gonna try to get a PC-based smart switch backup just to be sort of like uh, extra. The internal backup, it will have to be restored from an SD card or from a flash drive or you know some other USB storage device. And then the PC-based uh, smart switch backup, it has to be restored using the PC smart switch. So come on, baby. Here we go, one minute left. Anybody wanna take any bets whether or not it reboots right now? Come on, don't reboot. Dun, 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 This is about to be the longest one minute of my entire life. Ah, yes. We are now complete, 50 gigabytes backed up. Video, audio, let's see if we got any errors, shall we? Images, messages, settings, home screen, call data, and I actually do not have any errors. From this point, I can pretty well breathe easy because I know I have a full backup that they can use to restore to a new phone, and I also have a backup of all of the user files. Now, this internal smart switch backup, 
it can only be restored using the internal smart switch backup feature. So this customer's new phone, it's gonna need to have either an SD card slot to put an SD card in with this backup on it, or they're gonna need to have a USB storage device so they can connect via the USB port. What I'm trying to say is that internal backup, it has to be restored internally. So I'm gonna make a PC-based backup now so that if they want, they can just connect it to a computer, install smart switch. They can pick the backup that I'm gonna to send to them and then just use the computer to restore that to the phone. So there's their 50 gig off of this phone on my little SD card. So there you have it. The PC version of the smart switch backup is done. And this is gonna be a happy customer. I'm gonna go ahead and power this device off and uh, get this thing put back together and ready to send back now, some of you might be wondering why it is that I'm not putting more effort into this and trying to repair this phone by reballing the RAM and the CPU. And the reason for that is I only do that level of rework for the sake of data recovery and not for the purpose of full repair because I have actually done this a few times. And after reballing the RAM and the CPU, there's still a chance that it might die 30 seconds later. I've never really laid my finger on exactly what it is that is causing this fault. I believe that we're dealing with either cold solder joints, bad CPU, bad RAM, or possibly bad flash memory, but in this instance, probably more like CPU or RAM. Now, if it is just cold solder joints, I have to wonder, why does this device run so blazingly hot once it is up and running? I mean, this board will get hot enough to where it just almost, it feels like it's gonna blister your fingers. So I'm not entirely convinced that this is just bad solder joints. I feel like that we have something going on within the CPU or the RAM itself that is being affected by, by this heating. So this is, a wild goose chase to, to try to repair this. Anyways, that is gonna be the end of this one. I'm gonna get this put back together and get this ready to send back to the customer and I have to move on to my next one. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.